Three mistakes every singer makes. Singing too much. You do not have to sing for hours a day to become a better singer. Just be consistent. Singing too loud. Everybody wants to belt it out as loud as they can, but you need to take care of your voice. Mimicking, Mimicking other, other singers. singers. Embrace your unique sound. We already have Ed Sheeran. We already have Taylor Swift. We want you. Here's how I went from a good singer to a great singer, and it's not what you'll expect. The day I became a great singer was the day I let my personality shine through. I fully admit I'm super weird, I'm super unique, I like a wide range of things, and I love that about myself. So I let that come through in my performances. I wanted the audience to see me. I wanted to, you know, not hide behind anything. I wanted to show them who I am, and as soon as I started doing that, I became a great singer. I say this all the time, but we don't need another Ed Sheeran, we don't need another Taylor Swift, we need you. You're unique, embrace that and let it shine through in your music making. If you wanna sing better in 2022, here's what you need to do. Drink more water. For singers especially, we need to hydrate our voices. Stand up straight. Good posture will let your breath and your voice flow naturally and beautifully. <laughs> Be consistent in your practicing. Practice for 15, 20 minutes a day. It does not have to be a big time commitment. Here's my biggest piece of advice for new singers. Sing what you want to sing. The process is going to be a lot better for you. Just the process. You're going to enjoy it more. You're going to learn more. And inevitably, you're just going to become a better artist, a musician, if you do it from the heart. So that's my advice. Three questions, three answers from a professional singer. How do I improve my singing voice? Practice, be consistent with your practicing. How long should I practice? 15 to 30 minutes per day. Please do not make practicing a burden. It does not have to be a huge time commitment. What song should I sing? Sing what you love. The process of learning how to sing and becoming a singer is going to be so much more fun and better and beneficial for you if you sing what you love. Trust me. Here are the benefits of singing lessons. You get to work with a professional, somebody that can guide you in the right direction to make sure you're doing everything healthy and correct. Consistently sing with proper guidance. So singing lessons are typically weekly or bi-weekly, and that consistent schedule is going to be one of the greatest factors in your success as a singer. Help with goal setting. So one thing a voice teacher or a vocal coach is going to help you with is set realistic goals in a realistic timeline. So they can kind of help you out, make a structure for what you want to do and where you want to go. I can help you with all three of those things. Just click the link in my bio. You can book a 30 or a 60 minute voice lesson. I'd love to work with you. Here's how I became a singer. Blossom of snow. I was really lucky to come from a big musical family. Music was always around. I was always making music. All of a sudden I started taking music lessons, voice lessons, piano lessons, and then I found myself at music school. And I actually fell out of love with music um, a few years into music school. I think singing just became too academic for me. It became like a chore. And it wasn't really until I became a content creator and had all these people inspiring me to, you know, try out different genres, try out different songs, different songs that I had never heard of before, that it really invigorated that kind of spirit and love for music. So thank you, social media, for inspiring me to become a singer again. Are singing lessons worth it? Yes, for two reasons. Number one is you're working with a professional, so they can help you and give you professional advice and lead you in the right direction. Number two, consistency. Voice lessons are typically on a weekly or bi-weekly basis, and that consistency is gonna be one of the greatest factors in your vocal journey. Consistency is key. Here is my all-time favorite quote for singers. We first make our habits, then our habits make us. So if we develop all of these bad habits as singers, they will make us. But on the other side, if we make good habits, healthy eating, drinking lots of water, stretching, doing all the things that we need to do as singers, then that will reflect in our own singing. Can singing break glass? <laughs> yes, it can. A wine glass is incredibly resonant because it's hollow. A loud voice at the right frequency can cause enough vibration for the glass to shatter. If you suffer from a dry mouth or dry throat before you sing, you need to try this trick. I call it hyperhydration, and what you do is you drink a lot of water a few hours before you perform. Drinking lots of water a few hours before you sing allows the water to get in your system on a cellular level, so your vocal folds are really, really hydrated. Can singing cause a sore throat? It can, but it shouldn't. Sometimes the muscles in your throat get a bit sore if you're not used to singing, but if you're feeling pain, discomfort, or you're losing your voice every time you sing, 
then you need help. Stop it. Get some help. I suggest you work with a voice teacher or a vocal coach. They can help sort out some of these issues that you may be facing, but if the problems persist, I recommend you see a doctor. Are singing voices genetic? The shape of our bodies, our vocal tracts, the bone structure in our face is all genetic. But anybody with the proper training and practice can become a better singer. It's really all about pinpointing your strengths and weaknesses. So we build off of our strengths and we really hone in on those weaknesses. Here are some vocal problems that I've had to overcome and I'm still working on. So for me, the big one has always been tongue and jaw tension. So I'm still working on this one, but one thing that really helps me is just spending a bit of time warming up my tongue before I sing. So I might just move my tongue around in my mouth, kind of like this, or also just stick your tongue out. The other one is jaw tension. I've always had kind of a tight jaw. So again, I just spend a bit more time in my warm up, just focusing on my jaw. Maybe I'll give it a little massage, move it side to side, just so I feel better when I go to sing. It's important to remember that our vocal issues and problems, they don't solve themselves overnight. You may have a great breakthrough in a voice lesson or you may be starting to figure it out, but just remember it takes time and consistency. Ever wonder why your voice sounds different on a recording? As speakers and as singers, we produce sound right here at the vocal folds, but it can sound a bit distorted because our ears are so close to the sound source. Our vocal folds vibrate as they produce sound, which can be perceived by the ear as sound and give us a false sense of bass. So if you're learning to sing, what I recommend is you record yourself as you sing. Record your lesson, record your practicing, and then listen back later instead of trusting your ears. Because in this case, you can't really trust them.